The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from the Naval Air Station at Livermore near San Francisco, California, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Guess what? This may be a little hard to believe, but government authorities say that most folks don't get enough breakfast, and they're concerned about it. They want us all to eat a good breakfast and do a better job. Now, it turns out the reason why so many people give breakfast the brush is because of the time and cost involved. But if you start your day with moldy rich grape nuts or grape nuts flakes, you solve the whole situation. For these delicious cereals cost only about a penny a serving, and they're so quick to fix... They cost you nothing in time. Now, as you know, nutritionists say that a cereal with whole grain food values is a must for the adequate breakfast. Well, both grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are crammed full of all around whole grain nourishment, including iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Proteins, too. So thanks to grape nuts and grape nuts flakes, you can have a good breakfast in about the same time it would take you to sip and run. Eat a good breakfast, do a better job. Enjoy Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes. Gentlemen, let me take you behind the scenes of radio and show you how an announcer introduces a comedian to get the program off to a good start. Uh, go right ahead, Don. You see, folks, we announcers depend upon holidays and special events to give meaning to our introduction. That's right, folks. Every introduction has a meaning all its own. For instance, last Thanksgiving, when I introduced Jack, I said, since this is a new Thanksgiving, we bring you an old turkey. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's why Roosevelt went back to one Thanksgiving. He didn't want to hear that joke twice. <laughs> uh, continue, Don. When the Christmas holidays rolled around, I introduced Jack by saying, we can't bring you Santa Claus, but we bring you a man who's holding the bag. <laughs> now, uh, now that joke never had a chance. It was given its primary training by Red Skelton grounded by Abbott and Costello, and washed out by Fred Allen. <laughs> All right, Don, proceed with your lecture on introductions. When I introduced Jack on Washington's birthday, I said, George Washington threw a dollar across the Potomac. We can't bring you that dollar, but we bring you the man who has all the others. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll never forget the reaction to that gag. The audience rose to their feet, bowed their heads for one minute, and sat down again. <laughs> Continue, Don. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, the various holidays have much to do with introducing a radio comedian. But this is not a holiday. That's right. So for absolutely no reason at all, I bring you Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, I agree that today isn't exactly a holiday, but there is a reason for introducing me to these sailors here at Livermore. There is? Why, certainly. I used to be a sailor myself uh, back in 1917. Oh, uh, did they take men over 38 then? <laughs> uh, Don, how could I be 38 then when I'm only 32 now? I mean, don't, uh, don't let this gray hair fool you. It isn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so there. But, Jack, 1917 was 27 years ago. And if you're 32 now, that means you entered the Navy when you were only five years old. I was a daring little devil, wasn't I? <laughs> you know, I, 
I still have the tattoo of Shirley Temple on my arm. I really have. Anyway, let's get on with but the... But, Jack, you were so young. What could the Navy do with you? They made me an ensign. <laughs> That's what. An ensign at five? They thought I was seven and shut up. <laughs> This, this gray hair fooled them, too, you know. <laughs> and, Don, I wish you wouldn't make me lose my temper while we're here. I'm sentimental about the Navy. Oh, me too, Jack. You know, I wish I were a sailor. I feel that I could put my heart into that uniform. Don. <laughs> Don, you'll never... Oh, your heart. Your heart. <laughs> Anyway, we, uh, we better get started with the... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis Hotel. Oh, yes. I've been staying there all week. Well, congratulations. We've got a room for you now. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm, well, I'm... I'm glad it was a little noisy sleeping in the lobby there, you know? In the lobby? Why, Jack, wasn't it embarrassing getting undressed? Oh, no, Don, no. They have two lobbies, one for men and one for women. <laughs> and what a scramble getting dressed in the morning. Yesterday, I came out of there wearing a commander's pants, an admiral's coat, and a sailor's hat. <laughs> I almost went crazy saluting myself. <laughs> but, Don, no kidding. We have had a very exciting week up here, haven't we? Oh, we certainly have. Especially last Monday night at the Henry Kaiser shipyards when Mary launched that ship. We had a great time. Well, I was enjoying it until the foreman at the shipyard insulted me. Don, the foreman apologized. He told you he was nearsighted. He didn't try to launch you intentionally. <laughs> it was just a natural mistake, that's all. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. How are On, boys. Oh, we were just talking about you launching that ship Monday night. Oh, that certainly was a thrill. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And gosh, Mary, the way you socked the boat with that bottle. What a swing. No kidding, Mary. You were terrific, really. The girl who launched that other ship didn't have half the swing you had. She's never been out with a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I guess it's... I guess the proudest moment of my life came when I launched the boat and said, I christen thee the Edward E. Hale. But, gee, Mary, I asked you to try... Don, I told you a thousand times they wouldn't let me call it the SS Great Nut. <laughs> oh, fine. Don probably wants you to launch it with sugar and cream, you know? But then on second thought, why should he? Grape nuts are for breakfast, not for launch. <laughs> huh? My. Did that come out of me? What happened then? What happened? Oh. <laughs> oh, brother, those are the kind of jokes that keep us moving from camp to camp. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Mary, I can't get over how many boats they've launched here in such a short time and the amount of champagne they have to use. Imagine all that champagne falling into the water. Then that explains it. What? Uh, yesterday, I saw a man fishing, and as he pulled one out of the water, the fish shrugged his fins and said... In my condition, who cares? <laughs> Mary, it's all right to be silly and don't over, but don't overdo it. You know, fish can't talk. Well, this one was so cockeyed, he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. But all in all, it has been an exciting week from the moment we crossed the bay and arrived in San Francisco. Say, Jack, did you notice those huge Navy planes landing on the water? Yes, and I was puzzled by those big things at the bottom where the wheels should be. Uh, what are they? Those are pontoons. Yes, you've Pon seen them before, haven't pontoons? you? Pontoons? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are the things the automobiles use in Los Angeles during the rainy season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I remember that. Well, look who's here, Alice Faye's pinup boy. Hiya, Jackson, hello, fellas. <laughs> well, Phil, it's good to see you. What have you been doing all week? Just fishing and wringing them out. What? It's the first time I ever had champagne with bones in it. Oh. 
Say, Jackson, you want to know who's stationed at this base? I just saw him on the outside. No, who? Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he... Mary, come back here. <laughs> no kidding. Phil, I didn't know Robert Taylor was stationed here. Sure, he's a lieutenant. He's a flight instructor. Well, what do you know? Now, I bet he looks handsome in his uniform, huh? Oh, I don't know. I've seen him. When you stop to think about it, he's not so handsome. Well, maybe not. I don't know. When you stop to think about it, he's not so cute either. Well, you'd know more about that than I would. I don't know. And when you stop to think about it, he's just another man. That's all. Well. You know, Jack, I think they're crazy. Who? The girls who stop to think about it. <laughs> I should have known you were leading up to something. <laughs> Phil, for heaven's sake, play a band number and get Mary out of this romantic mood. Okay. I was handsome, too, when I was a sailor. Spain played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And Phil, I want to tell you something. You've been with me about nine years. The first time I really enjoyed your boys. You well, know? thanks, Jackson, but these ain't my boys. You know, I left my regular orchestra in Los Angeles. Oh. Oh, well, I should have known this wasn't your regular orchestra. These fellas are wearing shoes, you know? <laughs> now, that don't mean nothing. When my boys play, they have a reason for not wearing shoes. They have? Sure. When they come to an eight-bar rest, they got to have something to count on, don't they? <laughs> Well, now I've heard everything, you know? Oh, Jack, you're always picking off Phil's orchestra. They must be pretty good. After all, they're working for Slapsy Maxie. I know. What do you think made Maxie Slapsy? <laughs> <laughs> and now, fellas... All right, Jackson, all right. So my band ain't so good. What do you want me to do, fire the boys? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, Phil. I mean, give them two weeks' notice. Only two weeks' notice to fire them? Sure. What are you talking about? I gotta give them eight months' notice to learn a new song. <laughs> Well, then start now. I want them to know Jingle Bells by Christmas. <laughs> Listen, Jack. What? Phil may be too modest to brag about his orchestra, but he had an offer to play in one of the most exclusive places around here. Really? Where? The Rodeo Club. <laughs> Say, that's a... That's a funny name for a night spot. I wonder why they... I wonder why they call it the Rodeo Club. Because after you take one drink, they throw you, hog tie you, and brand you to show that you've been waited on. <laughs> well, gee, they must really be doing business. And now, fellas, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis Hotel. Yes, yes, I know. We have your room ready, but due to the shortage of help, you'll have to make your own bed. Oh, oh, I don't mind making my own bed. Good. Here's a hammer and saw. Get busy. <laughs> Anything to help, you know, I... 
And now, fellas, as a special tribute to the Livermore Air Base, tonight we're going to... Uh... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Dennis. Uh, as I was saying, fellas, tonight we're going to... How are you? Fine, kid. Fine, fine. <laughs> As a special tribute to the Livermore Air Base... Gee whiz, Mr. Benny, you haven't seen me all week and you don't even say, Hiya, Dennis, old kid, old pal. Gee, I'm glad to see you. What have you been doing? Okay, hiya, Dennis, old kid, old pal. Gee, I'm glad to see you. What have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> Just as I thought uh, Tonight, fellas, we're going to try Except and... last Tuesday What? Last Tuesday night, I had a date with a beautiful blonde <laughs> Dennis And oh boy, did I paint the town red The Bal Tavern, the Gay 90s, the Top of the Mark, and the 1079 Club Wow, wow <laughs> Hey, you Listen, kid, you, uh You, uh... <laughs> Dennis, you really were stepping. Did your, um... Did your girl have a good time, too? I don't know. She didn't show up. <laughs> well, of all the things... Uh, Dennis, there's no fun going to all those places by yourself. There isn't? Of course not. <laughs> and another thing, kid, how can you afford to go to those expensive nightclubs? I don't check my hat <laughs> Well, how can you save money that way? Jack, this may come as a surprise to you But when people get their hats back from the check room They're supposed to leave the girl a tip Oh, 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 yeah <laughs> Say, you know, girls are lucky They don't have to check their hats huh? Of course not Well, anyway, Dennis Getting back to, say I wonder Stop thinking about it You'd look silly wearing a lady's hat <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it at all. I was just thinking how silly it was for Dennis to go to all those nightclubs without his girl. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, I was having so much fun, I didn't even realize she wasn't there. Well, when did you miss her? When I went to kiss her goodnight. <laughs> well, at least it didn't spoil your evening. I'm glad you got around, kid. Yeah, I went to one place yesterday afternoon where they threw me, hogtied me, and branded me. Oh, the uh, Rodeo Club. No, the Income Tax Bureau. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. March the 15th does roll around. Well, anyway, now that you're here, kid, how about singing a song for the boys, huh? Okay. Okay, well, let's have it. Along on the street, fellas shout, Here, pretty kitty, here, pretty kitty, blue eyes. You can hear him shout every time she goes out, Here, pretty kitty, here, pretty kitty, blue eyes. But she looks at no boy, she's lonely in New York. Oh, she loves a doe boy named Johnny O'Rourke. That's why she'll never hear anyone till he'll shout. I'm here, pretty kitty, here, pretty kitty, blue eyes. Her eyes are like the blue skies of Erin. Her beauty is something quite daring. There's no one as pretty, as pretty as Kitty. She's got the whole town staring When she walks along on the street Fellas shout silly a doosha shin a ball around the blue eyes You can hear him shout every time she goes out silly a doosha shin a ball around the blue eyes But she goes with no boy She's got her memories Oh, she loves a doe boy Who's now overseas that's why she'll never hear anyone till he'll shout. I'm here, pretty kitty, here, pretty kitty, blue eyes. There's no one as pretty. 
pretty as pretty as Kitty, my darling Kitty. Pretty Kitty Blue Eyes, sung by Dennis Day for the first time on the air. Dennis, that was beautiful. Thank you. Say, Mr. Benny, I wanted to talk to you about something. You know, when I was at the Income Tax Bureau, I got all mixed up. You did? Why? Well, my salary is $35, isn't it? That's right. And because my song only takes two minutes, you told me it amounts to $186,000 a week. That's right, Ken. Then what do I pay tax on, $35 or $186,000? Uh, Dennis... $186,000 is a theoretical figure. You're not really getting that much. I'm not? No. No wonder my girl didn't show up. <laughs> Dennis, let me try to... Wait a minute, Jackson, wait a minute. You better let me handle this. I'll explain this whole thing to the kid. Oh, fine, fine. Now, look, Dennis, theoretically, Jackson is right. What? Now, uh, the $186,000 is your high uh, hip pocket, uh, hypothetical compensation. Uh-huh. Uh, which means that your remuneration is based on the limited time of your prod... Produce, prod uh, uh, just skip that. Prod uh, prod productivity. Oh. Now, the element is the question to segregate... Segregate... Seg uh, 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 Segregate, segregate the actual from the supposition. Oh, uh -huh. brother. Now, uh, so summing it all up and then condensing it to simple uh, phraseology... Yes? You're a bum. <laughs> Phil. Hypothetical remuneration, phraseology. Phil, for heaven's sake, where did you learn all those big words? Oh, I was up with them all night. And Jackson, the next time you give me a speech like that to read, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Phil, just once I wanted people to know that you can pronounce words even though you don't know what you're talking about, you know? Oh, you and your educated writers, you. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. London, the manager of the St. Francis Hotel. I know, Hotel. I know, I know. You lucky man, I now have a room for you completely furnished. Oh, fine, fine, thank you, that's well. I'm glad. Uh, tell me, do I have a tub? Yes, but if you button your coat, nobody will notice it. <laughs> Now that I can't understand at all. Oh my goodness, I forgot to ask him something. I'll get him back. Oh, Mr. London! Mr. London! Here he comes, Jack. Mr. Benny wants to talk to you. Mr. Benny? Yes? You may not remember me, but I'm Mr. <laughs> Never London. Never mind that! Now, here's what I'd like to know, Mr. London. Do you serve breakfast in the rooms? Why, yes, certainly. You can have anything you want. Good. Now, tomorrow morning for breakfast, I want grape nuts flakes. Why? Ooh, what he said. <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. Because... They're moldy rich, sweet as a nut, and have whole grain nourishment. That's why. That's telling them, Jack. And furthermore... They're a thrifty buy in the big 12-ounce economy size package, and they're not rationed. Either. <laughs> telling him, Jack. And another thing. I met a sailor friend of mine here, and he told me that he likes to start his day with a big bowl of grape nuts flakes because, because his motto is, eat a good breakfast, be a better gob. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and do you realize that grape nuts flakes are an American favorite? Why? Why? Are you crazy? No, I'm London, manager of the St. Francis I know, I know. Peculiar fellow, but likable. Now, where were we before he came in? I was a bum. Oh, yes, yes. No, 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 Dennis, you're not a bum. And let's not start that again. Let's get on with the... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, what's the idea of calling me long distance from Beverly Hills? I'm making out my income tax and I'm stuck. Well, what's, what's sticking you? The first line. 
The one that says gross income. What's that? Well, that means your entire income. <laughs> For example, Rochester, I pay you $2,000 a year. That means your gross income is $2,000. $2,000? Yes. Boss, is that theoretical, hypothetical, or did the operator give me the wrong number? <laughs> Don't worry, you haven't got the wrong number. Now look, Rochester, in figuring your income tax, put down all you made, then list your deductions, such as contributions, donations, bad investments. Bad investments? Does that include money lost while on bended knee? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It has nothing to do with shooting crafts. Anyway, I thought you told me Lady Luck always smiles at you. She does, but yesterday she forgot to use Ethereum. <laughs> well, it serves you right for playing with strangers. This wasn't a stranger, boss. You know my friend Sam? Yes. Well, he's got the only paradise you can locate with radar. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean they're trick dice? Trick? When you roll them out, one comes up seven, the other eleven, so there's nothing to be in doubt about. <laughs> well, this certainly ought to teach you a lesson. Uh-huh. Yesterday sure was a bad day for us. Us? Yeah, that green sport coat of yours fits Sam perfectly. <laughs> Rochester, you mean to say you lost my sport coat in a crap game? I couldn't help it, boy. You couldn't help it? You had the nerve to gamble with my coat? I was trying to win back your tuxedo. <laughs> That's the Rochester. You better have my clothes back by the time I come home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Uh, if you go to another luncheon, will you do me a favor? Sure. What is it? Bring me back two cases of fish. Two cases of fish? Y yeah, and when you pull out the hooks, uh, uh, clock up the holes. I don't want to lose any of it. <laughs> okay, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Darn it, every time I go away, something happens. Mr. Lennon, it, it really seems a shame Jack didn't, uh, had to go all, through all that trouble about getting a room. Yes, it was too bad, Don, but what could I do? Well, uh, frankly, you should have consulted me. You mean you have the answer? Right, you should have put Jack in a breakfast room. Well, well, that never occurred to me. Next time, I will. And with a great big bowl of molly rich toasty brown grape nuts flakes. Why, of course, that goes without saying. And you know grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, chuck full of all-around whole grain nourishment. One type of nourishment nutrition experts say we need every day. And delicate, toasty brown grape nuts flakes taste so swell, everybody goes for them. They have a molly rich flavor, a crisp, distinctive texture that makes them tops for breakfast pleasure. So, friends, <laughs> if you always want to be able to get a hotel room, eat a good breakfast, do a better job, and make tempting sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes your favorite dish. I want to thank Captain Champion, Commander Walker, Lieutenant Tyser, and all the men here at the Livermore Naval Air Station for another swell day. And now, just another word. Uh, President Roosevelt, in a recent statement, urged every young American who will be a high school graduate by July 1st to investigate the Army and Navy Reserve Program immediately. It is of the greatest importance to the nation that as many as possible take the March 15th examination. For those who properly qualify in this age group, the Enlisted Reserve Program provides the best possible opportunity for them to serve their country. These tests will be held in your local high school at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, March 15th. Thank you and good night. Ohio, dear grocer mother, get hot grape nuts wheat meal and say, it's so tempting, so hot.